On today's episode, we are talking about our absolute favorite storylines of this coming season and some huge news going on. But I think most importantly, there is a historic mailbag drop that cannot be missed on today's episode. Leave a comment. Tell us what you think. Enjoy the show. The Fantasy Footballer Studio is brought to you by Samsung Galaxy. Visit Samsung.com to learn more. Unless one has an affinity for looking ridiculously foolish, it is wise not to stumble aimlessly into a fantasy football draft. The Ultimate Draft Kit from the Fantasy Footballers contains all the information you need to avoid the jeers of your enemies and to snuff out any glint of hope in their souls. Imagine the gasps those trouser-wearing turnips will emit as you make yet another triumphant draft selection. Imagine their tears forming a formidable puddle as you assemble an unstoppable force. The Ultimate Draft Kit comes bursting at the seams with fantasy goodness. When you enter the draft room, you'll feel as if you were a monstrous beast let loose in a chicken coop. Head over to UltimateDraftKit.com today. Welcome to the Fantasy Footballers Podcast with your hosts, Andy Holloway, Jason Moore, and Mike Wright. Oh, welcome in. <laughs> okay, we're back. Yeah, buddy. It's almost kickoff, Jason. Oh, man, someone had a lot of coffee this morning, Mike. It was Andy. <laughs> this morning, last <laughs> night. It's just been a constant stream of caffeine. Welcome in. And other constant streams. Yeah. I've been drinking a lot of coffee. Streaming, yeah. streaming quarterbacks. Uh, you know, Soon enough. From everywhere. <laughs> Mike Wright, Jason Moore, Andy Holloway, back with you. Hello. Excited to be back, Mike. I like the cap today. Oh, I like your cap. Well, you know. Jason. Uh, it's really ironic. Why, hair, not, why no cap? I want to show off my receding hairline. <laughs> and so, uh, hey, your, your guys' great there. hat game really covers up luscious locks. I don't have any beauty to cover up there. You've never really felt like the hat works with you. Like, you don't have a, a, a face for a hat. I think it's <laughs> like, yeah. I I feel like... I'm not cool enough to rock a yeah. cap. Okay. Oh, except yeah. for Fedora Week. Well, I mean, right. Yes. Fedora Week was... That uh, was the worst. <laughs> <laughs> we need another Fedora Week oh, bet man. at some point this year. Fedora Week was... Oh, that was man. legendary. There has to be a Brees Hall Fedora bet at some point in time. Uh, excited to be with the Foot Clan today. I just wanted to quickly say thank you to everybody that supported the book launch yesterday. Indeed. It was uh, awesome seeing pictures of uh, moms and dads with their kids reading the book and um, sharing the best parts of sports with them, and, and thank you very much for that. Uh, a couple of housekeeping things at the top. We will be live once again on Spotify this afternoon, 6 p.m. Eastern, 3 p.m. Pacific. The Party Room is back, taking questions, talking about everything and anything as we head into the 2022 fantasy football season, always a great time. Um, the draft kit, if you're drafting this weekend, like uh, the three of us are, our big league of record draft is Friday. Grab the UDK before then. Um, I'll be using it. Well, there you go. What? No better endorsement <laughs> than uh, the originator, the founder of the draft kit himself. I'm not only the president. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, yes, yes. And uh, so check that out, ultimatedraftkit.com. And time is running out to jump into the Megala Bowl, the largest fantasy football tournament on earth. So much fun. All the listeners of the show together in one gigantic, ginormous, exceptionally fun league. Please come play with us, megalabowl.com. It will be a lot of fun. One entry per person and um, made some improvements this year just to how the whole thing works. And there'll be leaderboards, uh, and it's going to be fun. Yeah, we'll be talking about it all through the season, so make sure you're in it. Now is the time. There are plenty of drafts coming up uh, starting Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday. The uh, Plenty of different time slots. So go to uh, sign into your sleeper, and you're ready to go. 
Oh, it's that time of year, isn't it? Yes, Everything sir. is happening. Here's your quick question for today's episode of the show. What is your favorite NFL storyline heading into the 2022 season? There have been so many of these throughout the entire offseason from Tom Brady's mysterious absence to, you know, all of the trades and transactions. Jason. Yeah, so uh, I am really, really interested in the second-year quarterbacks. Uh, there are every single one of them, other than General Mills, is a storyline I'm really, really interested in. I want to know. why exclude General Mills? It's Kellogg's guy. Yeah, no, it's it's really like that is the uh, that's just the brand cereal. It's so boring. The Houston Texans aren't taking a leap forward. He oh, I, not I feel now, like not anymore. We yeah. know what General Mills is. He's going to take a step forward, be a little bit better than last year, be better than people give him credit for, but not good enough to be a I mean, he's not going to take that roster and, and win a ton. So I don't have a lot of curiosity mm. there, whereas Look at the Jets and all the weapons they supplied Zach Wilson and and my love for Brees Hall. It, but everything there comes down to Zach Wilson. Does he take that step forward or not? And then the opposite of what they've done to Justin Fields, providing him nothing, can he overcome that? Uh, you know, Trevor Lawrence with the new coach. You've got Trey Lance. I mean, yes, I don't think do. there's oh, anybody gosh. more – you know, with more eyes on him in the NFL than Trey Lance this year. So it, this is the storyline I'm really curious Mac about. Mac Jones? This. Mac Jones. I, You know, I put Mac Jones a little bit more in the the Davis Mills category. Yeah. It's kind of yeah. boring, and I also think the Patriots offense is going to suck this year. I've completely, like, early in the offseason I was excited because I believe in Mac Jones. I think he's a very good, very capable quarterback. He obviously impressed his rookie year, but... I don't know if you can overcome Matt Patricia being the play caller on offense with Joe Judge backing him up. Well, yeah, and in Houston, New England fans, you know where to find him, Twitter, at JasonFFL. <laughs> oh, they know. They agree with me. They're like, yeah. <laughs> I, but don't know. I don't know about the Mac Jones Patriots fans. They haven't really agreed to a negative storyline in a while. Yeah, I mean, I again, I'm pro Mac Jones. I'm anti that offense Matt right Patricia. now. With, yeah, Matt Patricia and Joe Judge. All right, Mike, what about you? What are you paying attention to? What are you most excited to see sure. come to fruition? So the, the quick answer is, as my champion for the past couple of years, I want to see what is the actual truth for Antonio Gibson, his usage. I mean, and now you, can course, you handle the truth? I don't know. I don't yeah. know if I can. And you have the wild card of the the egregious attack on Brian Robinson. Like, what does that look like now? Is Is there a world where – yeah, you feel like okay, Antonio Gibson should see a way uh, higher usage in this first couple months while Robinson's recovering, and then all of a sudden you're like, oh, it's it's actually J.D. McKissick getting right. a whole bunch of snaps on first and second down, and you're just absolutely furious about it if you bought back into <laughs> Antonio Gibson. I took me some J.D. McKissick I th yesterday. I think in a is, PPR league. Yeah, I think it is well worth the the investment in just the draft. in case absolutely and then the big one that i'm looking at is we have mo not just one but two elite wide receivers who have changed teams with what's going to happen with them in their new situation what's going to happen to their quarterbacks uh, we have a very chicken or egg experiment happening here of who made who great it, it, it it's very possible that Everyone just was making each other even better, and, and everyone succeeds. But there's a world where Tyreek Hill, despite all the buzz that he's getting in training camp, there's a world where a couple weeks in, that dude is furious and, and upset with his decision to move away from Patrick Mahomes. And there's a world where Devontae Adams is like, why aren't you as good as Aaron Rodgers, Mr. Carr? Or the opposite, yeah. right? Yes. Like, where, where all of a sudden, we're a couple weeks into the season going, Man, Aaron Rodgers and Patrick Mahomes are really struggling without, yeah. you know, having a dude at wide receiver. It's a great science experiment. I feel like some football fan got a genie <laughs> and was like, I want to figure yeah. this out. Let's let's put some chaos in here. Yeah, doing the running the Madden simulations in yeah. real real life. I yeah, or or Tua ends up being a, a bargain that nobody drafted and sure. and they have a great offense with Mike McDaniel who's been Could you happen. Know, got a great history. Uh Sort of a piggyback on the, like you mentioned, Tyreek, and then Devontae Adams. The AFC West, in oh, totality, man. is my favorite storyline. 
Mahomes without Tyreek and with Andy Reid, the Russell Wilson experiment in Denver with Let's all ride. of those weapons. Let's ride. <laughs> and then Derek Carr, you know, I said in the studio yesterday, like this is so such an interesting situation. It looks like Darren Waller is going to get a contract soon. Um, you have Hunter Renfro, who is just uh, incredible, uh, especially finding space. And then you have Devontae Adams. And Derek Carr was the sixth most passing yards at the position. So all he's missing is this touchdown area that's like, boy, if that came, he could be like a yeah. top three passer somehow. Maybe not for fantasy, but it, it's just the whole division. And then the Chargers. I mean, who doesn't love right. Austin Eckler, Justin Herbert, Keenan Allen, Mike Williams? They, they could He could throw 50 touchdowns there. So the whole division... I will be glued to the television for every one of those head-to-head -head matchups. Um, and then the fantasy ramifications therein. There's probably, what, 25 players in that division that could change your fantasy team. And this year, they're playing the NFC West. as like That's how the schedule lined up, So, which is other great teams. It's unbelievable the amount of 50-plus point uh, you know, over-under lines that the – AFC West has this season. So for fantasy purposes, you want players in that division. There's going to be some barn burners. Yeah, and the way the no NFL's, barns will remain. No, no barns. Burnt. <laughs> no sheds, no outhouses. It's all just to a crisp. No mm -hmm. structures allowed on this lawn. Mm -hmm. None. A lot of ash at the end of this season. <laughs> there you go. All right, we are moving forward. News and notes from around the league. I can't wait to discuss this topic. Yes. And I don't really know where you've settled in about it. The Texans released Marlon Mack. So this the writing was somewhat on the wall here. He played deep into the last preseason game. He's been re-signed re to the practice squad. But right now, this is Damian Pierce's backfield in Houston. Well, I mean, Lovey Smith won't let us know yet. Along <laughs> with Rex Burkhead uh, as a compliment. But the kind of the question, I guess, to open this up is, and I know there are people out there that would say, please just don't mention the name Damian Pierce for another few days on the show because I am trying to get him late in drafts this weekend. Sorry. I'm sorry. It's our job. Yeah. yeah. Also, we, you always talk about future Hall of Famers on the show. So is the hype out of control for Damian Pierce? Would you answer that question with a simple yes? Yes. yes. Both of you. Yes. Yes. I am. I am very excited for Damian Pierce. Like these are the type of players that it's, it's it's fun and like it's a good move. It's a good move to bet on youth and upside at the running back position. But he is he is skyrocketing uh clearly in in ADP and I think you, you just make sure you're looking at the entire situation for Damian Pierce. Yes, he's a very exciting player when you saw him was looked truly dominant uh, on the field, and now his what his perceived biggest threat was Marlon Mack to to his potential workload this year. He is on the practice squad, which so I mean they could technically call him up whenever they want, but that's not likely. However, they kept Rex Burkhead, they kept Daria Goomba Wally, like the two guys who have a, a history yeah. in the NFL of being very successful pass catching running backs, and yes. I'm I'm not saying Damian Pierce won't catch any passes on first and second down, but it if his his role is first and second down on a bad team on a on on an offense that's losing and then in the second half they're frequently playing catch up and you have to go to the pass catching running back not just on third down but for the primary of the second half where Rex Burkhead's getting a lot of snaps Agumba Wale is in there then your downside for Damian Pierce is pretty catastrophic so all i'm saying is just pump the brakes if you i'm i'm fine with the, the rise to the sixth round honestly like that's that's not a range where i think it's crazy to take a shot and bet on him but like people are really excited i'm seeing you know on twitter and i get it people are like well dude Brees hall or damian pierce because damian pierce looks like he's locked into the starting job Brees hall still is not there like the level of excitement is overthrowing the the level headedness of thinking in the about the game in probability the probability that Brees Hall is better than Damian Pierce is so much greater uh, on the Brees Hall side so just just take a breath 
and and collect yourself, collect yourself, and don't over, don't like, don't move Pierce into the dead zone. But you will regret that. We could always do this. Uh oh. oh no. I want to play a game. Oh no. Uh, no, I'm making this up as I go along. Oh, okay. We're, we're okay. going to play a game that I just invented. Okay. And the game is called Could Damian Pierce Outperform Blank? Okay. All right? And I'm going to toss sure. it Jason's way Could, first. Could, not will? Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah, because because part of the process of saying he's being overhyped and drafted too high is this idea that you know, that's a misappropriation of value and that you couldn't get a better season from Damian Pierce than substitute sure sure and, and uh, not necessarily probable but could we saw yesterday let's start with one we saw in a draft yesterday i did a cbs draft for their draft a thon um which is you know they do every year in support of saint jude which is awesome chase edmonds was drafted by yours truly two picks after damian pierce could damian pierce have a better fantasy season than chase edmonds and what is the probability i'll, right. I'll have you throw that in yeah there. i think the probability is a big part of it yeah okay. because what is the probability could, that he has a better fantasy season than chase Evans? could he yes but i would put the probability below 50 percent. i think that it's you right. know uh 35 percent i'd go chance 25 that, that he has a better season than chase Evans. okay what about damian pierce versus like cordero patterson what is the probability he has that's, a better season than cordero patterson that's a bet i'm willing to take I, I would put, that he'd have a better year yeah i i'm okay making that move and that draft selection so i would put that above 50 percent yeah, I, I would still have it slightly below 50%. I think Cordero will be doing the same thing he did last year, just less efficiently. All right. What about Damian Pierce and then the probability of a better season than Josh Jacobs running back for Man. the explosive AFC West Las Vegas Raiders? He's like the that's the comp for me where I look at two players that I see as having the same kind of range of outcomes. Both could be really good. Both could be disappointments. Uh, I'll take. I'll. I'll say forty nine percent chance. Ooh, okay. I'm way lower than that. Like it, Josh Jacobs may. We could see a Patriots, you know, type of a split there. But the Patriots have also had their goal line running back, and if anyone prof profiles as the goal line running back for that team, and they should score a lot of points, it would be Josh Jacobs. So I would put Pierce over Jacobs. Thirty mm, percent. One final one. You've got clarity now, right? In Houston, Damian Pierce is going to be the starting running back. Has juice. Sure. I mean, yours truly said he's going to be a star. You I mean, did. That means yeah, a you, lot, you right? Said that. Yeah. yeah, you said that before the, the big breakout. Yeah. Um, J.K. Dobbins. Oh, man. Damian Pierce. J.K. Dobbins with all these questions right. flying through the air. Kenyon Drake, Mike Davis, injuries, Gus Edwards. Or Damian Pierce. When you're staring that decision that, down in a draft. That is very interesting due to like their their profile for what they will be for the team is pretty similar. Like J.K. Dobbins is not going to catch passes because Baltimore Raven running backs don't they don't. don't catch passes. Um I will take Dobbins in that so I guess we'll, we'll stick with the Pierce percentage. I will give Pierce a 35% chance to okay. outscore Dobbins, okay. so still low. Yeah, I, I would be around there, probably 40%. However, I think for purposes of why people are listening to this, I prefer Damian Pierce in a draft, and the reason wow. is because of how the beginning of the season will go. I care a lot more about the opening month. My, you know, I'm going to make transactions. I'm going to make, you know, uh, trades and uh, try to improve the team as, as you know, the months go on in fantasy football, and what if I told you Pierce starts against the Colts and the Denver Broncos? I, so that's that's a perfect example. That's Bad gross. matchups, and I still think he outscores J.K. Dobbins in the first two weeks because I, I think J.K. Dobbins, if he is playing in week one, which still isn't known, is not going to handle a large workload. I mean, I, I wouldn't be surprised if he, if he is on the field in week one. I think J.K. Dobbins could have fewer 10, than 10 or touches. fewer yeah, touches. Yeah, no, I'm with you. That's why Pierce is doing what he's doing is because you get into your draft and when you're drafting Damian Pierce, there's a chance those teams are ones that went running back or I'm sorry, went wide receivers early, mm -hmm. trying to find starters and guys like Cam Akers and J.K. Dobbins or Josh Jacobs for what, you know, it's so clear that Pierce is going to start week one and you're going to get running back touches. And I think with Dobbins and Akers, you've got this 
I'm afraid to count on them. If I went wide receiver early, tight end early, oh man, can I count on them as my running back one? Right. I, I think that the most interesting this or that player to me is Rashad Penny because no one wants Rashad Penny. Oh man, he's sure you know. Oh, he's he's got, he's going to get injured. He's you know not good. He's on a bad team. He might not be a a real pass catcher, but it's like this kind of looks pretty Very similar. similar. Yes. They're both bad teams that want to run the ball and in a neutral game script will run the ball. They both project to be the starter, but there are other backs that are going to be involved. Uh, if I had the choice that I would take Damian Pierce because of the fact, even though Penny has shown us elite upside, mm -hmm. it's my mindset of like, do I get a running back for the year? And I feel like Damian Pierce is locked in as a running back for the season. Sure. As opposed to Penny, who feels like you are buying a week of good fortune every time you start him. So for me, if I was leaning on that position, it's not a third running back. You know, if it's a third, fourth running back, I might go Penny for upside. Rashad Penny is the most beautiful, like, house of cards that's on a tray <laughs> that you're carrying. And right? it's gorgeous, and everybody's looking at it. But don't bump that tray where the whole thing is going to be worthless. Yeah, I agree. And by the way, um, just so you guys know where the hype is at currently, I did ask people, uh, Damian Pierce or Oxygen, uh -huh. Damian Pierce is winning 63% well, to 37%. Course, yeah. Those, these are big uh, nitrogen people. Okay. Yeah, Mr. Periodic Table over there. Michael Gallup was not placed on the reserve PUP list to open the year after he passed his physical. So this is big news for how that wide receiver room is going to shake out. You go look at that depth chart. It's... Slim Pickens now with mm -hmm. no James Washington, no Cedric Wilson, no Omari Cooper, and Michael Gallup was paid to fill that role. Yeah, I I, uh, I drafted Michael Gallup a little bit above ADP in our listener league because I think he'll be a very involved, very good fantasy player on the course of the season, but he won't be there week one. He's he's not placed on the reserve PUP, um, and so that's great. That means that they are expecting him back before week five. He doesn't have to sit out four games. Uh, Jerry Jones recently said, Look, if the Super Bowl was week one, he'd be lining up. He's that ready. Thanks, Jerry. But yeah, uh, don't worry, Jerry. You won't see a Super Bowl. Um, oh, it's oh. just yeah, I know. Sorry, Cowboys fans. Uh, that's at Jason FFL <laughs> over on what Twitter. What are you doing, man? I'm speaking truth. I oh, apologize oh. <laughs> for nothing. Um, but I do think Michael Gallup will be good on the season. But I liked your logic yesterday comparing him to Hopkins and the weight for Hopkins versus the weight for Gallup. Exactly. Hopkins, you know you're waiting six weeks of suspension, and then he comes back and will be good. And and you could say, well, Hopkins will be better than Gallup when they're both. And I will say that. Yeah, yeah, sure. Well <laughs> but, but one is far more valuable over the course of the season because I think come week three, you're going to have a player that you can play by week four, a player you are playing because Gallup is going to be very important to this offense. I mean, if CeeDee Lamb doesn't take the leap, which you'd like to have seen more games evident of a leap in his past, there's a chance Gallup's the go-to target or the more predominant target or as good as CeeDee Lamb for free. There is there is a chance, but there's also, I get he's not on the pup. There's still, I, I believe there's other things they could do, like put him on the IR, and that guarantees that he's going to miss a handful of games. As of week one, he's now he would be about seven months out in his recovery. Most of the research on ACL stuff, and then getting this information from our injury guy, Matthew Betts, says that a nine months is basically what, what these athletes really need to recover. So, wow, I mean, it is, this could be a J.K. Dobbins thing. Like, you're afraid of Dobbins not getting touches in, in the first few weeks. I'm afraid of Michael Gallup not getting targets because he's not re really ready to go, and the the comp the the comp of him to Hopkins like when Hopkins is back on the field, I feel confident that he will return and be a huge part of the offense, which he will. Michael Gallup could struggle like the entire year, and you're just waiting and waiting and waiting like. When is Michael Gallup really going to be ready to go? When am I going to get that real use, usable game from him? So it's it's a in, really interesting conversation of which side uh, you would go with. You can put Gallup on IR. 
That was you can't put Hopkins right. on IR, and you're not paying anything for him, so you can just let him go if he's not that thing. That's exactly sure. what I was saying as soon as I drafted him. Uh, it was I'm going to throw him on the IR, pick yeah, up a waiver. Option. Did you say that out loud to yourself? Because that I would be really cool. I said it to Mike. He, yes, oh, okay. he, was he did. Because okay. I was like, "What are you doing?" <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, you you pick him up. He's currently the at the twelve thirteen turn, so he costs you nothing. Throw him on your IR if you have one in your league, and then pick up an additional player. All right, Greg Dulcich, who was threatening for that tight end one position in Denver, will miss the first four weeks at a minimum. Hamstring injury, IR. No bueno. Are you in on Albert O now? No, I'm really not. Okay. It's uh, no likely. I, I think he's always a threat to score. I mean, that, that was the case even with Noah Fant there. But the lack of confidence that the team has shown in him makes me wonder how often he'll be any type of central focus in the offense as opposed to just a guy. Um, but you never – I could be wrong. He's got a long name, so who knows? <laughs> He could score. Uh, O.J. Howard will not be scoring for the Buffalo Bills, but he is visiting the Bengals and ex expected to sign. They have Hayden Hurst and Drew Sample right now. Wait, Sample's still around? You betcha. All right. The sample size is shrinking with O.J. Howard's arrival. So, whatever. I don't care about this signing. I don't either. Uh, Sony, Mich Jason, do you? you no, you, not really. He okay. wants to. I want he to. He wants. But I, don't. I could I, see it in his face. I, uh, yeah, that's I'm, okay. I, thank you. It's thank okay you. to want yeah. OJ Howard to be what we thought he would be. Yeah, the last time he was released from a team was day ago. Uh, free <laughs> was agent. A, was he a top ten pick? Is that what? Yeah, it was? Oh yeah, I'm pretty confident For the Bucks? he was. Man, let me double check that. I want to say teens. He's top twenty. Yeah, top really? 20, okay. Teens. All right, but if man. Top 10 in Jason's heart. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, you're right. He was uh, the 19th pick. Okay. Uh, which was still exceptionally high for a tight end. Mm -hmm. Sonny Michelle, free agent running back, released by the Dolphins, visiting and likely to sign with the Chargers. Uh oh. What does that say about Isaiah Spiller, who it's, was yeah. back? He, he's he's uh, back active today. Um, but it, it says that they're not supremely confident in the backups behind Austin Eckler. No doubt. No doubt. You, you don't worry about that with Eckler. You just. They're just shoring Correct. up a backup. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then, uh, regrettably for the show alone, um, uh, yeah. the Ravens did wave sixth-round rookie running back Tyler Beatty. Mm -hmm. yeah. So, dude does not look like a Beatty no, anymore. Not. Also, David David Blau is, <laughs> go oh! is gone. For <laughs> those. Oh, 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 oh. It hurts. Oh, oh, oh. Yeah, he's gone. He's gone, Mike. The dreams. They're over with. Someone, someone. He was Thanksgiving somewhere. Day game. Was that what it was? Right with the big pass to. I see Brooksy nodding. Uh, the big pass to Galladay. Yeah. Back when Galladay ran routes at full speed <laughs> and caught uh, them. <laughs> <laughs> um, well, when you said that the Ravens running backs don't catch passes, my mental picture there was they bat them down. Like they're uh, they're getting yeah. thrown them all the time. They just bat them down. Like Lamar, what, what are you doing? This isn't the plane. <laughs> you run. That's right. Uh, all right. We are going to take a quick break and then jump into some voicemails in the mailbag. All right. If you have a question for the show, you can go to the website, thefantasyfootballers.com. Go ahead and click that submit a question button. Or better yet, dial our voicemail hotline, 302-464-TFFB. You can also join us on Spotify Live this afternoon for live question and answer. Yes, you can. Let's kick it off with a voicemail. Hey, ballers. This is Nico from Massachusetts uh, calling about Devontae Smith. You don't seem to hear anything about the sophomore bump uh, for Devontae Smith this year. Um, wondering why you don't hear it. All right. Love the show. Bye. Because the shadow cast by the enormous A.J. Brown yes. hides the tiny, tiny, Devontae Smith behind it, but it is something worthy of talking about. This offense is not going to be what you want it to be with Jalen Hurts and this uh, moving down the field and being a powerhouse without Devontae Smith taking a leap. Yeah, and he is a great wide receiver. I mean, he had a phenomenal rookie year, which was, again, in the shadow of a different player of Jamar Chase where and Jalen Waddle, where you go, you don't realize how good Devontae Smith's rookie season was because he was – not the best or the second best. He's very, very, very good. I think that the Philadelphia Eagles are going to take an offensive leap forward. 
and he's undervalued right now in the eighth round. He doesn't cost much, but you're right. It's because A.J. Brown is there, and it coincided with him missing a chunk of you know the training camp and preseason time. So A.J. Brown got all the love uh, from the beat reporters. The targets were astronomical. He's back. He's healthy right now. And so I, I think Devonta Smith is a is a really good pick in fantasy. Now before um, I answer this, this this has been an ill el an ineligible mailbag question. Oh really? I don't know what I don't know what's going on over the, over there with you fellas. We're not even in the mailbag yet. Whoa! No, I I noticed. You that. knew. I knew. And I, you still you powered the through. The silence is embarrassing. Yeah, I was. made a big mistake. I mean, look, I, I, Andy forgot, and then Jason's just like, well, this is what we do now. You're trying to cut out my part of the show? We did well, talk I mean, about that yeah, earlier. We wanted to upgrade, but I guess we can go down. Wait, well, you're going to up? Oh, okay, then Jason's going to do it. Oh, yeah, no! He is. No! Mailbag. Mailbag! Woo-hoo-hoo-hoo! That was not so bad. <laughs> um, wow, you set yourself up to get knocked right down. <laughs> Well, this is show 1,278, so... Um, I think that's the first forgotten. I do, too. Uh, you know, we came out of the break. I was so eager to tell him our phone number, and uh, we missed I the understand. core part of the show. I'm sorry, <laughs> Foot Clan. We got it. We made it up. Um, let's go ahead and grab another voicemail. Hey, Ballers. This is Eddie speaking. Uh, would you trade in a dynasty league Joe Mixon for Chase Edmonds and a 2023 first-round pick? Thank you. Love the show. Ooh, that's a really interesting one. That is okay. Joe Mixon. This is a dynasty trade. Joe Mixon for Chase Edmonds and a next year first round rookie pick. So this is all going to come down to one simple question: confidence level that Chase Edmonds will not be good for the NFL and for the Dolphins, right? But take a step forward as a true fantasy option for your team. I am my answer to this question is I do not have the level of confidence in that happening to make this transaction. Mixon is a one of the true workhorses in the NFL. And while I have hopes for Chase Edmonds, I do not have certainty about him the way I do with Joe Mixon. So I will unfortunately for your my guy have to go with Joe Mixon. Yeah, no, I completely understand that. I think you laid out the reality of uh, the situation very well it it really is a matter of do you believe that you will get a top you know a top 20 running back season from Chase Edmonds and obviously this is team uh, dependent like are you one of the best teams out there you're running for a championship if you're in a rebuilding team this is an easy yes take the trade um, 20 both of these players are 26 years old uh, th that's when I try to trade running backs you know yeah. I, I would like to capitalize on them and then restock through the draft the 2023 draft class next year is pretty loaded and there are some great running backs so I think I make this trade because I do think that Chase Edmonds can be a top 15 running back this year he's nowhere near as good as Joe Mixon but adding that youth and capitalizing before you know the age cliff is hit for Joe Mixon I is very very close but I would take it so Mike you're the tiebreaker here <sighs> Uh, so Joe Mixon, 26, like you said, Jay, 27-ish is kind of an age where you should start worrying about running backs. Not that – I'm not saying Joe Mixon can't be one of those players that plays in very well past that age. Every once in a while it does happen. But looking at the contract situation, you got – you have probably a guaranteed two years of, of Joe Mixon being the starter before they reevaluate – do we need to get a new person in? Do we need to extend him? I, I lean keeping Joe Mixon here um, and going throughout the season. and I, Because I think there's a chance you can get a better offer mid-season should you really want to trade Joe Mixon. I think that like someone who's making a championship run might offer more than uh, like a that flex type of running back option and a first, I, I, so I think you can get more, and Mixon will do more for your team right now. The Arizona Cardinals were, tough. were one of the best offenses in football. And while Chase Edmonds had games that he did pop off and is super valuable on the field, you know, there's still big question marks about Miami and what they'll have. Sure. And we don't have those questions about Cincinnati. So that's another influencing factor for me that 
You know, you could be right and you could hit with Chase, but you generally got to get get into the end zone to be a difference maker in the top 12 range. You have to hit either on Chase or smash that first round right. draft yeah, pick. Yeah, that, that is part of it. And we, we like the, the class that's coming in for 2023, but for every class you like, like the, the wide receivers from a couple years ago where it was just the the Jefferson class where it seems like hit after hit after hit, mixed in there was Jalen Rager who <laughs> got drafted everywhere. Nikhil Harry. Yeah, like they don't. Sonny Michelle. They and, don't always yeah. hit. Uh, I would I would uh, piggyback on that thought of just saying not every first round pick is the same either. So look at the team you're trading with. Are they a great team that's going to be better with Joe Mixon? You're going to get the last pick or one of the one of the last picks in the first, or are they a dumpster fire who's looking to try to scratch a claw their way back in and you know project to be a top three first round pick? That can help sway your decision. All right, we have a question from Kalen in Zeeland, Michigan. Hello. Hello. This year I decided to start an all-female fantasy league. Fantastic. Over half of the league is brand new to fantasy. What are the top tips or pieces of advice that you would tell them about playing fantasy? Um, love it. Love the new league. You know, my piece of advice for anybody brand new to fantasy, if you're forming a league that has a majority of new players, is trying to – there's a lot to learn, right? If you're sure. not familiar with – all of the offensive players, and this is going to be your year getting used to that. Try to keep things as simple as possible. I mean, that is that's step one for any brand new league. To me, is you know, uh, I I did this in our our family league where we we're introducing um, newer players. It was like, well, is this the right time to be a fab league in year one, where where there's right. this whole yep. auction dynamic and you don't know how to player evaluate right off the bat? So we went standard waivers for year one. Um, because you're learning all these players. You're learning what's important. And we do try to make it easier in the draft kit to, you know, you show up at your draft and you feel a little bit equipped with some resources that you can just print out. Yeah, I was going to say my answer is extremely self-serving, but is actually a re really good answer for, for the purposes of this question. Tell them about the podcast. Tell them, you know, uh, uh, because there's – when we first started – one of the most common things that I remember from new listeners or people that were newer to fantasy was it seems like so much work. If you don't right. know the stuff getting in just is like, how do I research all of this? And our goal is we do all of the research and we crunch the numbers and we follow the news and we've done this for years, but we want it to be entertaining and digestible. So new people that are both super avid professional fantasy players can listen to the show, but new people can listen and just get the information as inner, you know, as, as fun as possible. Like it's not a chore to stay up to date. Yeah, and, exactly. So I think it would uh, help them a lot. Yeah. My sister and her boyfriend, both in their first time fantasy leagues, you know, it was like, I was bringing it up. Like there's going to be things like waiver wire and setting your yeah. lineup every week. And they're like, I didn't know that right after yep. their draft. So we try to make that waiver wire thing. I think this year we're coming out with some more resources for the waiver wire mm. to try to make the yes. week to week a little bit easier. Mike, do you have anything to add? Yeah. Just when you, uh, before the draft, just do a full like one oh one and make sure that you answer as many questions as you possibly can. And then also trying to, Trying to build the the camaraderie of the league and making it as fun as possible. But like with this first one, these people aren't going to be uh, they're not going to be full dug into like the game theory of fantasy football. This is the optimal probability. Like, don't worry about that. Like when you first get into fantasy football, you're just you're picking the players you know, you're picking the players that you like, and you're just, you're having fun. And yeah. in the the part where you start getting the 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 minute details of the game, that will come later. Just make sure that everyone's having a good time. And incredibly, Mike, I'm not sure if you're aware of this, whether you were a brand new league with brand new players or you are a seasoned pro with all of the experience, only one of the 12 teams yep. is going to win the championship in that league. I've heard and that. The journey, the the entire season of enjoying the league is, is the most important part. Um, here's a question from Instagram. Dak Prescott or Joe Burrow? Where do you go between those two? 
the majority of people are going Burrow. I am with the majority. I will take the upside of him being allowed to throw the ball more. He is one of the biggest uh other narrative storyline there for you. Yeah, he's one of the biggest uh, narratives that I worry about because I have been very anti Zach Taylor as as an offensive fantasy football. Obviously, they got to the Super Bowl, but for what? I want in an offense, I worry that they're not going to unleash Joe Burrow. They're going to still run the ball, uh, you know, too much, uh, be a little bit inefficient in that way and try to win games, you know, the old fashioned way instead of uh, the fun fantasy way. But if they allow him the opportunity to just sling the ball around, Joe Burrow's fantastic. The offensive line is way better and his weapons are awesome. The vibes are great there. Whereas in Dallas, you know, we we talked about Michael Gallup. Oh, he's going to be ready, but he's he's it'll be a couple months until he is at that nine month mark where you return to optimal performance. They've lost the offensive line pieces. Uh, you know, they lost Amari Cooper, so I don't feel like the vibes are quite as good. Yeah, so, I mean, is there any reason why Joe Burrow couldn't be what Justin Herbert is? If no. things go from the from an offensive standpoint, if they the defense isn't as strong as they think, or they, you know, he's got. Elite weapons, better weapons, you could argue, than even um, or similar to better than Justin Herbert. They could be in the same tier, right? They absolutely could. It's just Zach Taylor. Yeah, they, my entire That's argument. That's at Jason FFL. <laughs> my entire argument for Joe Burrow is, is just ADP and the, and the fact that if they don't make a big change to the offense and, and the tempo and going pass heavy, then Joe Burrow – has to play out of his mind yet again to to come back and, and pay out on that ADP. But in terms of just of of what could happen, of what could happen for Dak versus Joe Burrow, this is just in the vacuum. It's easily Joe Burrow. Yeah, and to to color in those lines, right now Burrow's in the fifth round and Dak is in the eighth round. So yeah. if we're actually factoring in where we're drafting them, I'm on the Dak side. I would much rather That's have mine. Dak in the eighth and a fifth round wide receiver because I love the fifth round wide receivers than using that pick on Burrow. Can I just share a, a sad little story from my drafting life this year? Sure. Yeah. yeah. I have no Justin Herbert. Oh, man. Mm. And I have piles of Mike Williams and Keenan Allen. So that stack would be well, so exciting and fun. You're still but, getting some of it. But the but the Joe – or sorry, the Justin Herbert stack is not possible for where Justin Herbert is going. I am always hoping in these drafts that somehow, some way, one of these, one of these leagues is going to let him slip to the point where I am comfortable to grab him, and I never get him. Can I share a story with you? You may. Mm. Uh, I don't know. In uh, my Weird most recent time is done. Uh, in my most recent mock draft for our upcoming league of record, oh, Justin Herbert went to your team, Andy. So there is still a chance. Not if I have anything to say about it. Uh, I know what that means. That would mean I take him at the tenth overall pick in, <laughs> our, in our keeper league draft, and I am afraid that I can't afford to do that. That is exactly <laughs> correct. Um, but the temptation will be there. Don't worry. All right, let's jump into another voicemail. Hey, ballers. Haven't missed an episode yet. Love the show. Wow. Just wanted to check in and see, in a super flex league, would you start Daniel Jones or Antonio Gibson? Thanks, guys. Okay. Yeah, Interesting. I, I, I mean, to me, it's Daniel Jones. Yeah, yeah it, it, it's Daniel Jones going away for me. The, the upside of quarterbacks, the downside of both players, I, I think the I think the floor is higher and the ceiling is higher for Daniel Jones. They're both great running backs. <laughs> yeah, they you. We have no idea what Gibson is going to be for this team with everything that has gone on. And Daniel Jones will touch the ball every single time that the Giants take an offensive. And snap. you have a whole you have a whole team of people that have been focused on Gibson for years, and none of those people know what's going to happen, right? That's right. That whole like focus group. Yes. Yeah. No. We we cannot get the information out. You cannot get no. it. Uh, yeah. That's generally in Superflex. You're going with the quarterback. You've got so much more upside. And so yeah, just uh, think about touchdowns like Antonio Gibson. Will he get a touchdown? He might. He might get a touchdown. That's possible. You know, get put at a 50 percent chance he gets a touchdown week one. Will Daniel Jones rush or throw for a touchdown? It's almost higher odds. Yeah, it's yeah, it's like for sure. He he probably will. Multiple touchdowns, much higher odds with the quarterback than with the running back. I feel a little sad that uh, that caller, you know, on the first forgotten mailbag after listening to every episode <laughs> that we've ever come out with 
Um, YouTube question from Trevor. How's your day today? Well, thanks for asking, Trevor. That's very nice. Um, I mean, it's early. It's, it's TBD. Early. Yeah, I mean, it's always a good time to, to get the show done. Um, but let me a little bit sleepy. Yeah, a little I'm, bit sleepy. I'm super tired, uh, <laughs> but I've still got pep in my step. So it's a real, you do. it's a real weird situation I'm living in right now. Yeah. How did how'd you manage yeah, that? I don't know. Caffeine. Why. Uh, <laughs> yeah, caffeine is um, it's a hell of a drug. All right. Um, last question here. Instagram from Danimal. Multiple leagues, same players or no? So it's kind of that question of, you know, conviction levels. Are you willing to go to the plant the flag so firmly in the ground that you want the same shares of the same players yeah. everywhere? Or are you, are if you you're skittish in, and hedging? When you say multiple leagues, if you're in three or four leagues, you're going to end up mostly with the same players, depending on where you're drafting from. If you're drafting from around the same spot, and at least that's how it is for me because the players I tend to like at certain spots of each round, I'm I'm going to take them – Every normal league I'm in. Now, on underdog, when I'm in 100 leagues, I am... That's your daily I, entry amount, right? I am, uh, I am definitely conscious of not overdrafting players, having uh, you know, diversified portfolio of fantasy football assets. Mike, he's in so many leagues that he's actually moved from underdog to the favorite. Oh, <laughs> he's got so many leagues. He's got so many shares. He can't lose. I oh. have to win one of them. <laughs> oh, that's, that's the best part is no, no, you don't. <laughs> <laughs> All right. One last reminder for those drafts this week and check out ultimate draft com. We'll be back with another episode of the podcast tomorrow. And a quick reminder, Spotify live 6 p.m. Eastern. Head over to the Spotify app. Listen in. It'll be a good time. We'll see you there. Goodbye. Thank you for listening to another episode of the Fantasy Footballers Podcast. Join our fantasy football community on jointhefoot.com and follow us on Twitter at the FFBallers.